every once in a while, a lesson comes along that just clicks in with everything that you've been learning like a puzzle piece. And this is that lesson. It just satisfies so many things, so many looming questions, uh, that, and it ha even has a dramatic title, Newton's Method. And it says, uh, Newton's method gives us a way to find the zeros of functions. And you might be like, well, I thought we already knew how to find zeros of functions. We just uh, uh, factor, don't we? Or if it's, you know, if it happens to be a quadratic, we use the quadratic formula. Well, yes, but we've been protecting you from a certain class of equations. And in fact, it's a much bigger class of equations than any of the ones we've been looking at before. And those are the equations that don't factor or won't solve using the quadratic formula. Well, what I mean by that is, uh, let's just think of a, a, a fairly simple function. Um, let's go with uh, uh, f at x equals x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 2. And I've kept the numbers pretty under control so that you can see uh, we're not talking about some fancy function with weird uh, coefficients and so on. Um, just very simple numbers. Life should be pretty straightforward. And if you went to use the factor theorem on this, you'd go f at 1, and you'd get 1 plus 1 plus 1. You get 5, and you'd go f at 2. Maybe you'd stick with positive numbers. You get 8 and 4 is 12. You get something like 16. 8 at 12. Four. Yes, that's right. And so you go, oh, okay, 1 and 2 didn't work. And, and maybe you even remember the rule that, hey, whatever works has got to divide into this uh, last number here, or it, there's just not possible for it to work. I mean, you can go ahead and check 3, 4, 5, 6. I, I'm telling you, they're not going to work. It's got to divide into that last number. So then you go f at negative 1. And what do we get here? Negative 1 plus 1. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's 0. And then negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Um, so that d doesn't work. And then f at negative 2. Is uh, what negative eight plus four is negative four. Negative six, uh, I get like negative four. So nothing works, and then uh, you you feel sort of hopeless about the whole thing. And actually, thinking back, you're like, what? So you just for a couple of grades here, you just made rigged everything up to factor so that we could use the factor theorem, and the answer is, yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, not that the factor theorem doesn't have applications. You saw in the derivative how important factoring is. It makes the derivative happen. And so let's not belittle factoring in all this. But if we're really about solving equations, the factor theorem is the beginning of wisdom, not, not, not the end. Now, Newton's method is cute. I, that, that's the best word I can think of for it is cute, is it uses a very cute method to narrow down the zeros of functions like this to as accurate as you want to. And some of this, you're just going to have to take my word for it until you get a little more experience on it. This method will get you answers as accurate as you want. Um, so here's the plan with the method. you got some kind of function, and I'm not trying to exactly relate it to the example I was just doing here, but it would, it would apply here. And the whole method is we say, okay, we're going to take a reasonable guess at what the, uh, an x value that would be a zero of this function. That would be a solution to the equation. Uh, that, is what, that would give us a zero here. And you say, well, how do I come up with my reasonable guess? Well, actually, I can tell you a pretty reasonable guess by the one we just did here. See, uh, f at negative 1 was 1, f at negative 2. 2 was negative 4, somewhere between negative 1 and 2, there is a solution in there somewhere. And I can already give you a pretty reasonable guess that is probably closer to negative 1 than negative 2, so maybe about negative 1.3, okay? So coming up with reasonable guesses of zeros won't be our biggest problem, actually. So here's our plan. We come up with a reasonable guess and we find the y value of that reasonable guess. And, I, and, and I'm just going to make something up. Maybe you find out the y value of your reasonable guess. Your reasonable guess was about 5, and you come up with an answer of 4. And you go, well, that didn't work. You know, that, that wasn't the 0. So then what you do is you use this y value right here that you have and the slope. 
And whatever the slope is, that tells you how much you should adjust your x value by. So I've chosen this x value right here, and it was a, it was a good choice, but it wasn't a great choice because I didn't actually get the zero here. And based on how much this slope is, see, if it's a very large slope right there, I don't have to adjust my answer by much, you see? Like I'm close to getting a zero. But if the slope's like really low, then I maybe have to adjust my answer by a lot. And I use that to just estimate and get a new estimate. And you go, so then my new estimate's the zero? No, no, my new estimate just gets closer. And I just keep repeating this process until I get closer and closer to the answer. Very cute method. All it uses is a guess, the y value of your guess, and the derivative, that is the slope at your guess. Very, very cute and tidy. Okay, so this method is especially useful when we are unable to find zeros using other methods such as factoring or the quadratic formula. For example, Newton's method can be used to find the zeros for a quintic function that doesn't factor since there's no quintic formula. Okay, so let's talk about the quadratic formula. For degree two, quadratic formula exists, so you wouldn't use this for, quad for quadratics normally um, because you have the quadratic formula available. There actually is a cubic formula, and uh, there are versions of the quartic formula out there. So you could theoretically use those things. But once you get to degree five, and for functions that aren't polynomials, that just won't work. See, this is going to work for anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be polynomials. And here's the big idea, which I already explained in the other uh, part. But here's a little more formally. So without seeing that other part, this formal um, section might make you intimidated by all this, that something crazy is going on. There's nothing crazy. Guess an x value. Use the y value and the slope to get a new x value. That, that's the whole method in it. That's why I call it cute, but extremely powerful. But here it is formally. Make a reasonable initial approximation of the zero you're trying to find using substitution or a graph available. Using your approximation, determine what the curve's tangent slope at the x value crosses the x-axis. So basically, we're going to use uh, the tangent slope to map back and see where it hits the x-axis, and that'll give us a new guess. Um, for the um, zero. It'll be a better guess, and it, 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 but it, it'll depend on that slope, how good a guess. or how, It actually depends on how much the slope changes. If the slope changes a lot in that section, then you can see here, uh, but because the slope is changing a lot, it didn't give a great guess. Then you would you'd do it again, you know? So that's what you see down here. You have this new x value, find the slope, and you map it back. And because the slope's much larger here, you're getting closer. And you just keep doing that and doing that until you get as close as you want. And you're like, this is going to take forever. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't take forever. It, it's in a shockingly short period of time, it gets close to the answer for most functions. And there's revisions of this method. There's people who have come up with methods that are even faster doing this, and we'll see them a little later. But for now, we'll just focus on this one. Um, repeat step two as much as needed using your newly found approximations with each iteration. The approximation becomes closer and closer to the value of the zero. And we could carry out this process by determining the tangent's equation in each iteration, but we, you won't really need to. You don't need to go through that whole process. You, um, you'll just uh, come up with a nice clever formula. Here's the clever formula. Um, and this is just missing a little bit of... In general... Our nth approximation of xn, and f prime at xn can't be zero. So if we don't get a derivative of zero, if we get a derivative of zero, this whole method fails, by the way, and we'll have to modify our method a little bit. Let's not worry about that for now. Uh, and uh, then our next approximation is given by x at n plus 1 equals x at n minus f at x1 over f prime at x1. Okay, lots of crazy symbols there, and it might make you think, oh, now it gets complicated. No, no, you're just taking your x value, your guess, which is xn, and then you're subtracting from that guess the y value divided by the derivative to map backwards uh, to the, uh, a new x value. That's all. So the, just exactly what's in this picture. You start with some x value right here, then get the y value right there, and then to get our new x value, you just subtract from this x value, the, the y value divided by the slope, and that'll map you right back to there, okay? And you're, I'm going to see that in action when we go here. Uh, using the diagram on the right, can you see how the above formula is derived? Okay, that's what I just did there. So here's the procedure. Give a first approximation to a solution of, of the equation f at x equals 0. That's kind of important. We need f at x equals 0 here. We're going to be looking for zeros here. A graph of the a function can help. 
but not, it's not necessary. Um, use the first approximation to get a second, the second to get a third, and so on using this formula. And you're going to see the formula in action here. So when you see the formula in action, it's going to make a little more sense. Um, okay. So, hey, let's jump right in and use it. You only really need to see it once, and, and, and this will all fall into place very nicely. Not the worst thing ever. So, consider the function x cubed plus 2x equals to 1. What is the maximum number of solutions of this? Well, a cubic function, if it would factor, you could get three factors. Or, if you want, there would be up to two turning points. So, with two turning points, you could get up to three zeros. I mean, cubic functions can be this complicated. They can do something like that and get up to three zeros. So, maximum number of solutions, we are looking for potentially three zeros. Uh, so then it says, rewrite the equation in a form appropriate for the use of Newton's method. Newton's method is about finding zeros. So we've got to get this so it's finding a zero. So I'm gonna, just going to move that one over. So I get x cubed plus 2x minus 1 equals zero. And if you try and sub in 1 and negative 1, uh, th th they just don't um, g give answers. Um, th those won't work. So it doesn't factor traditionally. Then it says, explain why the initial approximation of 0.5 is a good one. Well, okay, let's say you wanted to factor this thing, and you said, okay, l let p at x equal x cubed plus 2x minus 1. And then you went, okay, let's try p at 1. And when you put p at 1 in, you got 2. And then you try uh, p at negative 1. And when you put p at negative 1 in, you get uh, negative 1 um, plus negative 2, which is negative 3, you get like negative 4 when you sub in negative 1. Um, so that's not close. But look, it, it's gone from positive to negative in there. So if we just do a really, really rudimentary graph of this, um, at 1, this thing had value 2. And this is what it was saying before, is that a graph can help, or even a couple of points can help. And then P at negative 1, we were all the way down to 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere down here. So somewhere in between, there's a 0, you know, in between these two. So maybe we check out P at 0 and see what that would be. And when I sub in 0, I get negative 1. So that's a 0, it's negative 1 there. And so you say, well, okay, I don't know exactly what this curve does, but it's got to go from here to here somehow, from 0, negative 1 up to 1, 2. So intermediate value theorem, a fancy uh, theorem that just says, hey, if you're, if you're continuous and you cross the uh, axes, you're going to have to hit, go through the axis at some point. It's sort of one of the uh, uh, simplest ideas going, although it's a very powerful theorem. Um, so that gives us this idea that somewhere between 0 and 1 is going to be a nice... Um, answer in there. So uh, uh, zero, x1 equals 0 0.5 seems like a good place to start. So look for this uh, 0 that we're after, because there's obviously 1 somewhere between 0 and 1. So this says use Newton's method with an initial approximation of x1 equals 0 0.5 to find the third approximation. So we're going to take this procedure through a couple of mappings here. So our x1, our guess, is 0 0.5. And what we want to know um, is how good a guess that was. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is find f at x1, which is f at 0 0.5. And I'll just uh, plug that into my calculator. And just to get you warmed up on this um, uh, calculator that I'll be using here, I want to use x cubed uh, plus 2x minus 1. That was the function um, I'm using up here. And I call it p at x there, but uh, let me just uh, rewrite it down here. I'm calling it f at x now for this part of the question. x cubed plus 2x minus 1. And I'm going to sub in uh, 0 0.5 to see how, how good an approximation it is. It should, it should be not bad. And so I got my uh, fancy calculator here. This is something like what, what you might be using at home. Um, and so then what am I going to do? I'm going to go... Uh, 0 0.5 cubed plus 2 times 0 0.5. And there's a method to my madness showing all these steps, by the way, because some of the, uh, we're going to really refine this procedure using, because um, I want to show you how your calculator can be really helpful here. And I get 0 0.125, okay? 
zero point one two five. So it was not a bad estimate. You know, f at x one is going to be zero point one two five. So it, it zero point five wasn't the zero, but it was close. So then I'm going to find f prime. I'm going to find the slope at that moment, which is f uh, prime at zero point five. And so uh, let's see. We need f prime here. Three x squared plus two is the f prime. And so I got to plug 0 0.5 into that. So I need, uh, uh, let's see, 3 times 0 0.5 squared uh, plus 2. I, I know you don't need practice on how to type things in a calculator. I'm really up to something here. I really want to show you something about calculators uh, that are really going to help to do these questions. And so I get 2.75 there. 2.75. Okay, so we're in good shape here. Um, we're ready to get our second estimate. And they want us to get to the, uh, what estimate they want me to get to? Third approximation. So I'm now about to work on the second approximation here. So the, for this, uh, here's the formula for uh, um, Newton's method here. Uh, Newton's method says to find x n plus 1, take x n and subtract the y value divided by the slope to get a better value. I'm just going to draw a line. I'll try and fit, fit this all in here. Did I leave some space down there? No, I didn't leave any space down there. i got to fit it in here. Okay, so um, so for n equals 1, that is my first run at this, I'm going to put 1 as the n value. So check out this formula. What it becomes as I put in um, 1 as the n value, I get x2. Oh, that's what I want to find, is the second x value in this process. They say, okay, take x1, because I'm putting that 1 in for n, and subtract f at x1 over f prime at x1. And that's really what we just talked about before. Take your x value and subtract off it um, the y value divided by the derivative at that value. So really x2 here is 0 0.5 subtract f at 0 0.5 over f prime at 0 0.5. Okay? Um, so, uh, I already did those calculations. x2 equals 0 0.5 minus uh, the, the f value at 0, 0 0.125, and I'm dividing that by 2.75. And usually, it doesn't have to happen, by this moment, you usually get, you know, like crazy decimal stuff. And, and I think maybe I get a fraction here. But I, I sort of want to prepare you for the idea that it won't stay nice fractions for very long. So even if it does here, which I, I sort of think it does here, uh, stay, go to a, back to a fraction nicely, um, you shouldn't expect that to happen. Decimals are going to be in here. If it was nice fractions and nice whole numbers, we wouldn't need this method. We, we'd have uh, the, the, the factor theorem ready to rock and roll. So I get, ooh, 0 0.4545445, basically 0 0.45 repeated. Um, so I'm going to break that down. Equals 0 0.454545. And just a little secret about Newton's method. It actually doesn't matter how many decimal places you keep. And, and sometimes you, you won't get the exact right thing. You just use it for the next one. And it, it's a very nice process because no matter where you round off, as long as your answer is a little better, which it is, 0 0.45 is a better answer than 0 0.5, you'll get there. But I'm going to keep all the decimal places here. And if that worries you as far as punching it in the next line, that's what I want to show you about your calculator that's going to make this procedure so nice in your calculator. So I'm keeping 0 0.4545 all the way through. Well, maybe, you know, dot, dot, that just keeps going like that. Okay. So was that a good approximation? Well, I, I don't really know. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to the next approximation and see what, what it does because I can see this next question coming. It says, get it accurate to six decimal places. So how, do I, how do I know if I'm accurate to six decimal places? And the answer is, you'll know. Here, watch, this is so cool. I'm going to go again. N equals two now. And I'm going to go, okay, so that means if N equals two, I go back to my original formula. That means um, X three. See, I put N equals two back in here. So now I've, I've got X three equals X Two, I put a n of two in there minus f at x two over f prime at x two. This is how I get my next iteration here. Now I've got the x two down there, and I've got f at x two. I got the whole thing laying out here. So uh, here's what I want to type in into my calculator. I want to type in zero point four five four five four five four five. 
four or five, you know, that whole thing. But then I want to subtract, ooh, F, well, I'm not even happy that I put that there. I got to leave some room here. It's not going to be fun to write down, but trust me, I got a trick coming. Okay, so uh, I got to put 0 0.45 repeated into the original function. So I need 0 0.4545, you know, all that cubed plus 2 times 0 0.454545, you know, all that squared, no, 2 times that, minus 1, all over 3 bracket 0 0.4545, you know, that whole thing squared plus 2. You know, I got to do all of that in my calculator and all that typing. Well, well, no, I don't if I know how to use my calculator. Now, let me just make sure I wrote this down right before I switch over to the calculator. Um, 0 0.4545, yeah, that's right, minus f at 0 0.4545, which is 0.4545 cubed, plus 2, yeah, that's my, minus 1, yeah, that's all good, and then 3 times 0 0.45 squared plus 2. Okay, I was just double-checking, I typed that out. Now watch this, one important button in your calculator that makes this so nice. I go back to my calculator. I'm just going to make sure that, okay, that's good, that's in the answer. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to, instead of typing in 0 0.4545445, which is the first thing I want to type in, I'm just going to press this answer button down here, way down at the bottom right here, right beside the equal is answer. And I'd say, take the previous answer, subtract, okay, uh, fraction coming. And so on the in the numerator there, I want, take that answer and cube it. And then next, I want plus 2 times that answer, minus 1. See how nice this is? I don't have to write them all in. It's so good. Okay, and then down to the bottom there, I need 3 times that answer squared, plus 2, equals, oh, what a, what a, what a big mess here, 4, 5, 3, 3, 9, 8, 3. Um, i got to switch screens here in a minute. There's a copy and paste thing there. So uh, 0 0.4533938368. Okay, let me just uh, get that back into my other part here. So what did I get here? 0 0.4533938368. That was my next one, okay? Uh, let me just make sure I copy it down. Four five three three nine eight. Four five. Oh, where's it going? It's got down here. Four five three three nine eight. Three three six six eight. Three three. Yeah, I did good there. Okay, so that, that that's going to be my X three. That's my next guess, and apparently it's a pretty good guess. Um, now, how accurate is it? Well, I, I guess I don't really know. I have to go the next iteration. Sort of remind you the tables you build in advanced functions to go, well, I don't know. How good is it? I don't know. Do the next one. You'll know how good it is because at, at some point this thing will have to settle down where um, what's in that numerator gets so close to zero that you're not changing your approximation at all. See, when the y value gets close enough to zero, this thing sort of stops. It sort of stops getting better and better. So it says continue with Newton's approximation, or Newton's method, to find the value correct to six decimal places. So now I'm going to go one more time. n equals 3. Now when you're first doing this, it might help to write down the n value that you're using each time. And so then I would get this equation. x to the 4 minus x, or equals x 3 minus f at x 3 over f prime at x 3. Uh, so, geez, I can see those things up here. I'm going to write them all out again. Four, five, three. It's all there. F at X3. You know, it's, it's, it's all ready to rock and roll. I know exactly what to do here. So I go back to my calculator, and I type in the exact same thing. And some calculators actually just re let you press equals here, and you'll get the next one. You can actually just hit the equals button and get the next thing. Uh, my This one I'm using on the screen here doesn't happen to do that, so I'm going to have to type it in once more. But all I do is go uh, just type in what I just had there. Answer minus... Um, answer um, cubed plus two answers minus one over three answer squareds plus two equals. Okay, so better. Better approximation. Yes. 0 0.45 3 3 9 8 3 3 6 6 8 
3397-65152. Let's just see if that's accurate to six decimal places. My next one, 0 0.45. 339-765152. How many decimal places was it accurate? Uh, the last one was 4-5. Yes, 4-5. So that's two decimal places. 3-3. Three, three, no, that's, that's two, uh, two more decimal places. So it's four decimal places. 9-7 versus 9-8. Well, it might be. 9-8 might be the answer. But maybe it gets all the way down to 9-7. I'm not sure. So I'll go one more. Uh, X-5 equals X-4 minus F at X-4 over f prime at x4. And again, on your calculator, you might be able to just press equals here. Mine doesn't allow you to do that. So I gotta type this all in again. One more time. Answer, actually I don't even know if it's one more time. Um, we'll find out in just a second. Um, answer, power three, plus two, answer, minus one, and then the bottom, three, answer, squared, plus two. I copy that, I do all that right? Yeah, okay, so equals. Okay, uh, well, uh, yeah, so I don't know if you see what happens here. Like not only was it two six decimal places, I got this exact same answer back out again. Uh, so here, 0 0.453397655152, yeah? So like really good, you know, like it, it's not just six decimal places. It jumped all the way to like 11 decimal places that it's accurate to. So it only took five iterations. Now it can take longer than that. I'm not saying it, that Newton's always goes that fast, but wow, that, that one was pretty good. And so if you take that uh, number and sub it back into the original function, you'll find that it's, um, it, it comes out pretty close to zero. In fact, let's do it. We've got that four, five, nine. We're just gonna cube it, add two to it and subtract one. Okay, so take that answer qubit, because that was the original function, was cubed um, plus two times that answer, minus one, and we get uh, <laughs> 809 times 10 to the negative 28. Now, I have no idea this calculator used 809. Well, weird setting. It should be 8.09 times 10 to the negative 28. Uh, six, but okay, regardless, 10 to the negative 28 tells us uh, 28 decimal places before we get to the eight, or 26 decimal places, I guess. And that's how close to zero we are. Think about that for a second. In just a few calculations, like, it's astounding what Newton's method does. And Newton's method isn't even the best of the methods. It's not the fastest method out there, but it's a really good one to first learn on these things, okay? Um, so yes, I was successful in six decimal places. Uh, a quick conversation. When does Newton's method fail? Um, Newton's method will fail if you get a derivative of zero. So if you get, if you happen to select a uh, guess that's at a max or min, or if Newton's method walks you into a max min by accident, then clearly it won't work. It may also miss the zero if it jumps too far. That is, if the slope that you happen to get was a really small slope, but the slope changed a lot. So if your x1 was you know, at a spot where you get a really small slope, but it, it, it very quickly changes to a large slope nearby, uh, you might jump all the way over and go find a different zero than the one you were looking for. So how do you revise that? Well, you just have to make a better guess. You know, you're just gonna have to do better on your guesses a little bit and refine the method just a little bit. And let's not get too carried away with worrying about that. That's actually not that difficult to do, is to refine your guesses a little bit. Um, for some functions, however, Newton method may fail to converge. There are very symmetrical functions like the one you see in figure two that Newton's method just has a really hard time with it. And uh, you can use the double derivative and so on to help in these situations. So we will refine the method. So I don't want to say Newton's method is perfect because it's not. It's just awesome. That's all. It's just awesome. And uh, these little errors that can come up once in a while, um, we'll deal with those uh, with, with other methods as we move along, okay? So your homework is attached here. I've spaced it out a little bit, but it's 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 right there. And when you get a chance to take this stuff off for a test drive and then see uh, 
see if you can land this thing. Uh, and again, play with your calculator to make sure that you're doing this in the least number of steps that you can. And when you do it on a test or something like that, I'll be most interested in this answer. You know, if you if I can see you're basically doing the work and, and you do stuff like this, you know, I'm fine with that. That's no problem. Just as long as we're moving towards the right answer. And the nice thing is here, you can check your answer. You can plug it into the original function and make sure it's, it's working wonderfully. So uh, there's lots of uh, double checks here. So it's a really nice method. A little bit of practice should make you extremely confident in using this to find zeros. And it's such a nice puzzle piece to put together with everything we've done so far. Uh, I mean, the question that the advanced functions people just always ask is, well, what happens if it doesn't factor? And my answer always is, well, don't worry about it. We'll take care of that later. Well, here it is. We're taking care of it later. You know, this is this is what you do. And you computer people out there are probably drooling at this going, oh, wow, this is great. You know, because a computer can do this in a very short period of time. And that's how calculators and, and computers get zeros and, and, and solve equations so fast is they just do it like this. They don't actually try and factor or anything like that. They just go bang, 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 and get the answer. Okay. So have fun with that homework. And uh, we'll see you next time.